grace and peace to all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amani na neema kwenu nyote katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Karibu marafiki. <laughs> Welcome friends. <laughs> Today is a special day in worship. We usually have two services, one at 11 in English and one at 2 in Swahili, but today we are worshiping together, one congregation in two languages. Leo ni siku njema sana kwetu kwa dili ya kuwaburu pamoja. Kila mara wa tunapuwa na ibada mbili hapa, ibada ya kuanza subuhi na ibada nyingine jioni, lakini leo tumekuja sote pamoja, tumaburu munga pamoja, ni furaha sana. For those of you who have not had the chance, this is Pastor Amisi, Amisi Ngongo, and Pastor, Luang, uh, Pastor Luongo Sango, forgive me, are the pastors of the two o'clock congregation along with me. They preach, they lead there because Swahili is not my <laughs> best language. And so we rejoice to welcome Pastor Amisi in leadership this morning too. Kwa wale ambao hawajapata nafasi ya kufahamu, we are going to be Pastor Amisi, na pale tunamwona kuna Pastor Luongo, ni wao ambao wanasaidiana na mimi kuendesha ibada ya jioni ambao tunakuwa inafanyika hapa kila siku saa na tunafurahi sana kutumika na hawa watu and we welcome Sabrina also known as Cookie who's leading worship today she is one of the youth that we have gotten to know this summer more and more so thank you na pia tunamkaribisha Sabrina anamuita pia Cookie <laughs> uh, ni yeye ambaye atakuwa kiongozi wa ibada ya leo ni binti ambaye anaendelea kukopa kanisani Na tumenda kumu, kumu elewa vizuri zaidi katika kipindi cha sama hiki. Today, after uh, worship, we invite you to stay for a fellowship lunch in the fellowship hall. Everyone is welcome to stay and eat. Na baada ya ibada leo, tunakualika usiondoke nyumbani. Kwanza utabai kwa sabu utakua na chakula cha pamoja hapa kanisani, tule wote kwa pamoja. We'll have baked potatoes and salad along with sandwiches, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the little one. <laughs> na tumepiga viazi na chakula vingine tofauti tofauti ambavyo ametaja hapo tutaviona huko kwa hiyo tunahitajika kubaki baada ya ibada And then following lunch today we will have a we've set up a free shop in the next building thank you to those of you who have given for that but anyone who anyone is welcome to come and take what you may need there have clothing and household items Na baada pia ya kula chakula tumeweka pia sehemu ambayo kuna vitu tofauti tofauti ambavyo kusakanyisa mikusanya kwa ajili ya kusaidia mtu yeyote ambaye atakuwa na uhitaji kwa hiyo kila mmoja baada ya ibada tutakwenda sisi wote hapo na utachukua yote ambayo tunaona kama unahitaji kama kwenye maisha yako I want to let you know it's not in the bulletin but next Sunday in worship at 11 and at 2 we will celebrate Holy Communion Na pia tupenda kukumbusha kwamba wiki kesho tutakuwa na meza ya Bwana kwa kanisa zote mbili ya asubuhi na ya jioni pia. Okay, and I want to invite uh, Mr. Isaiah up, our music director, who is going to share with you a little bit about the hymnal fundraiser. Na nitamuita mbele ndugu yetu Isaiah ambaye ni kiongozi wa music hapa, atakwenda kutuambia kidogo kuhusu mpangile wa nyimbo. Good morning. It's not often you see me in front of you talking instead of singing, so <laughs> this is new for me too. Um, I'm excited because this is my first time as a music director that we have the opportunity to do something as, as big as this. Um, the hymnals that we currently use that you use every Sunday are about 30-ish years old, <laughs> which if you know anything about PCUSA, you know that they've come out with about two new iterations of the hymnal since 1990. Um, so we felt that it was in the best interest as far as congregational life was concerned that we do a hymnal fundraiser to start not replacing but to supplement the hymnals that we have currently. Um, the new hymnals cost about $30 each. That includes some shipping and handling. And the idea is that you would purchase the hymnal for your family or hymnals for your family in honor or in memory of other family members or friends of Amity. So if you look in your bulletin, you have a handout that is probably about the quarter of the size of this. <laughs> um, I do ask that you fill out one form per hymnal that you want to buy. If you need more copies, let me or Adrian know, and then you can give the money to either me or Adrian, and we will take care of it, and hopefully we will have these hymnals before we start Advent season. So that is the goal, to have new hymnals by Advent. Are there <laughs> any questions? If there are, ask after church. Yes. <laughs> 
new songs to sing. What a joy. Thank you. Thank you, Isaiah. Asante sana ndugo Isaiah. All right, friends. Oh, one more thing. You'll see a flyer in your bulletin about a workshop um, for new, or a computer workshop, a technology workshop for seniors. That is on August 12th, all about keeping your information safe online, your personal information. That's going to be in Johnston Hall. It is open to the community. If you'd like a registration form, I have those for you. Now, what I'm going to do is to get a flyer, and get a flyer, and get a flyer, and get a shule ya kompyuta hapa kwa ajili ya watu wakubwa kwa kujida, kwa ajili ya kuficha mambo yao kwenye internet kwa hiyo wanaalika kila mtu a register ambaye anahitaji hiyo oh, yes ma'am we have some plans we're working on that yeah thank you all right friends well, that was a lot of information <laughs> <laughs> we are a busy church with lots happening, but now let's turn our hearts to God in a spirit of worship as Cookie leads us in prayer. Pamoja na kwamba tumefanya vingi lakini kwa sasa tugeuze mioyo yetu muelekee Mungu wakati Cookie anakuwa akiomba. Let's join our hearts in prayer. God of love, you have planted us in the soil of your grace. Nurture us with the strength of Christ, who is the vine of ever, everlasting life. We want to grow with you, reaching up and out, soaking up your light and warmth, bringing a harvest that will nourish others. Meet us here this morning and give us the wisdom of your spirit, which flows through us today and every day. Teach us what it means to abide in you and live in your love. In, the whole, in your holy name we pray, amen. 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 Church, let's rise with wonder, with joy, and let's join in the call to worship. Basi utakwenda kusimama na tumwani pamoja katika kuimba. People of God, come praise your maker. We will praise the Lord. Our God is worthy of praise. Mungu anastahili sifa na heshima zote. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now people of God, we will sing to the Lord with him 418. God bless your church with strength. To the hymn tune of him ya 418 ndani ya kitabu. To the hymn tune of crown him with many crowns. <laughs> Different tune. <laughs>
please be seated. God's mercy is deeper than the depths of the sea, and God's grace is wider than the whole earth. Upendo wa Mungu ni kubwa sana kuliko bahari inavyozama na neema yake pia ni pana sana kuzidi hata ulimwengu. Trusting in that mercy and that grace, let us make our confession before God and each other. Na katika kuamini huo ni hiyo neema ya Mungu, acha tuombe maombi ya msamaa. We'll sing together first. Tutaimba then pas- kwanza. Then Pastor Amisi will offer a guided prayer in Swahili and then I will guide us through one in English and then we will have silent prayer. Na baadaye Pastor Amisi atakwenda kuomba kwa Kiswahili na kisha mimi nitaomba kwa Kiingereza. Let us pray first through song. Acha kwanza tuimbe. baba tunakuja mbele zako wewe oh, unaistahili sisi ambaye ni mwenye makosa tunasema ndio kutusamehe na kutuhemu kwa sababu hatustahili samee watu tu wale wale hali hapa ni mengi ambayo tumeyafanya sio kupendeza katika wiki nzima acha uende kutuondolea makosa na dhambi zetu tunasema asante kwa sababu tunaamini wewe ulisema kama wote utakao jitambua watakuwa tayari kusamehewa tunaamini kwa madamu ya mwana kondoo itakwenda kuosha na kutusafisha kila mmoja aliye mahali hapa kwa jina la Yesu Loving and merciful God, you know our hearts, you know our lives. We confess to you the things in us that cause us separation from you and from others. We confess the ways that we cause pain and sorrow, the ways that we tear down instead of building up. We confess to you our part in the great brokenness of things. And in humility and hope we ask for your help to do better to heal to reconcile to soothe to build up so that we can love you and your family our neighbor so lord in the silence receive our confessions and guide us to know and follow christ more closely Amen. Amen. Friends, God's mercy is deeper than the depths of the sea. Rehema za Mungu ni ni nyingi kuliko bahari. God's grace, God's love is wider than the widest ocean. Na upendo wake ni zaidi sana ya upana wa dunia. We trust in the mercy and grace of God. Na kama tunavyoamini katika neema na rehema za Mungu, Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. Speak with me. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Tunaamini kwamba neema ya Mungu ni kubwa na kupitia jina la Yesu Kristo tumesamehewa. Amen. <laughs> As we sing the song Jesus loves me, I invite any children here this morning to come down to the front. Na wakati kwetu tunaomba tunaimba hii nyimbo naalika watoto wote wakuja huku mbele. Jesus loves me this I know. Yes, Jesus 
Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am so glad that you all are here today. What a blessing it is to worship together. Today, we are talking about the way that God helps us grow, helps us grow as disciples, grow in our faith. <laughs> our friends are still coming. And how God, how Jesus told us to stay rooted in him and to grow from the love and the person of Jesus. Now, that's complicated. That's complex. But you all know how to stay close to Jesus because you all know how to be kind and how to love one another, how to pray, how to sing and worship. Those are all ways that we stay close to Jesus. <laughs> you want to come over here, Cookie? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I am... I want to invite some friends up here to share something with all of you. Some of you got to go to a camp this week about the arts and about the Bible over at the cemetery, the, the cemetery over at the seminary, which is a school that teaches people to be ministers and teachers. And you guys, some of you got to do some art. Raise your hand if you got to do that. Yes. And some of you brought your things, some of the things that you made. And lots of you made them, I think some forgot, and that is okay. But if you brought one of the things you made, I want you to tell all of these friends and these big tall friends back there what you made and why it's important. So, hey, Dylan, can you show us what you, can you stand up and I would love to see this. Can you tell us what you painted? What word is that? Jesus, right? He, and you painted all those colors, and you learned to do fancy letters, right? We use art to worship, don't we? Yeah. That's okay. You brought your scarf. Do you want to share about your scarf? Hold on. Your picture said, love is cool. I love that. <laughs> here, come here. Oh, there's your necklace. Here, June, can you show our friends one of the things that they did was a prayer scarf. I'll hold it. I would love for you, let me get a microphone, to share a little bit. We can learn from each other about ways to pray. You want to hold it? Sure. Okay. Um, so this at the bottom is a wolf howling at the moon nearby a cross. Well, what did you tell me about why wolves howl? Um, and prayer. I, I've always he's thought, or I just recently thought uh, about it. Mm -hmm. um, I have, I think that uh, howling is a wolf's way of praying. Ah, oh, I love that because God made wolves to howl and they're doing what they're made to do. Thank you. I want you all to visit with June after and learn more about her prayer scarf. And you're supposed to wear it. Yeah, hold on. Wear it when you pray and it reminds you that God is wrapped around you. Yes. You want to tell us about yours? You can have a seat, June. Here. Whoop, careful. Okay. You want to share? Yeah. You, did you paint a scarf, a prayer yeah. scarf? Yeah. What did you paint on yours? Do you remember? Yeah. What was it? I paint the, um... Did you paint colors? Yes. Yes. Did you draw anything on there? Yes. Yeah. Do you remember what you drew? Just designs. It was beautiful. Um, I... What do we do with the prayer scarf? Um, I, um... Mm -hmm. We wrap it around us when what? And when we pray? When we pray? Yes. Sometimes we need something to remind us about prayer. Yeah, hold on. Davy, you brought yours, and then you want to share your necklace? Okay, here, come on, Davy. Real briefly. Come on up. Okay. 
What are you going to share about? Okay, one of the other things they did was they made these glass, fused glass necklaces. And what was that about? Mine is uh, like a day and a night because mm -hmm. the, the prompt for it was creating us a new day. Creating us a new day. Beautiful. Yep, let me, let's see, Erin. I mean, Olivia, I'm sorry, I used your sister's name. Sorry about that. Olivia, what did you make? Can you tell us about your necklace? I made a necklace, but it doesn't have the string because okay. it, it broke. Um, the, the cut, did you do certain colors? You can just show it if you like. Mm -hmm. it's beautiful. I see blues and white. It says very beautiful. And some black and some sparkles, just like you. <laughs> when we create things, it's a way that we worship and pray. Do you have something that you want to share about what you made? All right, that's it. And Erin, do you, you want to share about what you made? And then that will be it, okay? I made a, like, a plant, like, it's, it's like, a plant? It, it like, sharp. Mm -hmm. So I, I put a, a little bit of water, and I waited, and I waited, and then it be sharp. Mm -hmm. You planted a plant. They made some for succulents, put a little bit of water, and you have to wait for it to grow, right? Like it's in three days, and that's it. Just three days? That's a fast one. Sometimes we have to wait. That was beautiful. Thank you. Erin, one minute, okay? We got lots of wiggles up here. I love it. I love it. It's okay, sweetie. All right. So um, one thing that I made was, um, okay, let's see. Um, my necklace, but uh, I left it at home. But, it's um, okay. <laughs> but it was like a pretty blue with some black and white. Mm -hmm. And I, I did not mean for this to happen, but the white looked like a beak picking out from the side. Like a bird? Ooh, does it remind you of creation? Yes. And the birds singing, wonderful. Thank you. So, all these kids have learned to create and to worship and to pray through making beautiful things, which you can do too. Do you know the most beautiful thing of all? You. Well, yes, God. Thank you, Davy. <laughs> That's the correct answer, I guess. But God made all of you, and you are the most beautiful creations of all. Okay? All right, let's say a prayer, okay? You want to say a prayer with me? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes, and you can say it after me, okay? Dear God, thank you for making us and for the beautiful world and for art. Teach us to love you and to love others. Amen. Okay. Friends, why don't we, there's a lot of you, so why don't you go back to your seats, unless you have a parent with you, to go to the back, okay? Let me see. <laughs> Will you share that instruction? Make sure that they can go to the back if they have a parent with them. <laughs> And as the children go to the back, uh, I'd like to say a few words before I actually sing this uh, beautiful song. Uh, it also gives me a chance to test out the mic. But I did want to say uh, I didn't give a whole lot of warning to the folks that need to set up the, the mic. And I appreciate the uh, short notice and the, the quick response. Uh, this song is... Uh, was written by Steve Fry. It's uh, called, Oh, I Want to Know You More. It was made popular by uh, Steve Green many years ago, so it's a little, little older, older song, oldie but goodie. Um, and uh, I did want to mention to the guy who's operating <laughs> the PA system, if we can turn down the response a little on this, uh, I am uh, going to be singing pretty much. There's a very loud response to this, and, and I, I think this uh, 
I'll end up with feedback on the, on the mic so we can tone it down just a bit. Don't need a lot of mic on, on this song. So it's a beautiful song that just says, uh, oh, I want to know you more, uh, talking about Jesus, his, his uh, uh, way that he, he looks after us and, uh, ah. Can't hear ya. <laughs> oh. A little closer. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, and I was thinking that I was uh, a little too. No. Too uh, might. Um, but God um, looks after us and very much uh, when times of uh, trouble and in times of turbulence, we uh, sometimes forget that uh, we need to know him a lot more. Just the time I feel that I've been caught in the mire of self. Just the time I feel my mind's been bought by worldly wealth. That's when the breeze begins to blow And I know the Spirit's call And all the worldly wanderings Just melt into His love Oh, I want to know you more Deep within my soul I want to know you Oh, I want to know you To feel your heart To know your mind Looking in your eyes Stirs up within me Christ that say I want to know you oh I want to know you more when the daily deeds ordinarily lose life and song my heart begins to bleed sensitivity to him is gone that's when I've run the race but set my own pace and face a shattered soul the gentle arms of Jesus warm my hunger to behold oh I want to know you more deep within my soul, I want to know you, oh, I want to know you, to feel your heart, to know your mind, looking in your eyes, stirs up within me, Christ that say, I want to know. resurrection 
Today's scripture reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Pastor Amisi will share the scripture in Swahili, and then Cookie will share it in English. Andiko ya leo, natoka katika kitabu cha Yowana, sura ya kuminatano, mustari wa kwanza, hadi mustari wa nane. Na nitakuenda kusoma kwa kiswahili, Na baadaye mchungaji Megan atakona kusoma kwa kingereza. Kwa hitu nasoma kwa kiswahili. Mimi ndimi mzabibu wa kweli na baba yangu ndiye mkulima. Kila tau indani yangu ulisiloza huliondoa. Na kila tau ilizaalo ulisafisha ili lizidi kuzaa. Ninyi umekuisha kuwa safi kwa sababu ya lile neno nililo waambia. Kaeni ndani yangu na ndani yenu kama vile tau ilisiloweza kuzaa peke yake jisipokaa ndani ya mzabibu kadhalika nanyi msipokaa ndani yangu mimi ni mzabibu nanyi ni matawi kaeni ndani yangu na ndani yake huyo uzaa sana maana pasipo mimi ninyi hamwezi kufanya neno lolote mtu asipokaa ndani yangu hutupa nje kama tawi ya kunyauka Watu kuyakusanya na kuyatupa motoni ya kateketea. Nanyi mkikanda ni yangu na maneno yangu ya kikanda ni yenu. Ombeni mtakalo lote nanyi mtatendewa. Hivyo hutukuzwa baba yangu kwa vile mnavyozaa sana. Nanyi mtakuwa wanafunzi wangu. Amen. Amen. In the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the word of God, and it is for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. This morning, we continue in our Cultivate worship series, exploring what it takes to nurture and grow a life rich with God's presence. Asubuhi ya leo tunaendelea na ma- mafundisho yetu juu ya ukulima na kuonesha namna gani Mungu anakuwa sisi tunafanana kama mazao ya Mungu ambao kila siku anakuwa anatunyunyizia maji. 4 weeks ago we began by dreaming God-sized dreams for our lives of faith. Na wiki nne ambayo iliyopita tulianza kuonesha namna gani Kwa imani watunaota ndoto kubwa katika mungu. And then we rejoiced that God, the generous sower, always plants his word in us. Na baadae tukafuraishwa na kuona kwa mwa mungu ambaye ye ndiye mpanzi wa mbegu huwa anapanda mimea ndani yetu. 
Last week, we explored the importance of spiritual practices and nourish, nourishing our faith through connection with God and each other. Uh, wiki jana tulijaribu kuangalia umuhimu wa kutumia imani yetu na kulisha imani yetu kupitia connection ya katikati ya sisi na Mungu. And today, today Jesus invites us into the image of the vineyard. Na leo Mungu tena natualika ndani ya ndani ya, ya, ya sura kama vile shamba. To understand what it means to tend to our connection to Christ, the true vine. Ili tupate kuelewa ni connection gani yuko katikati yetu sisi na Yesu Kristo ambaye kama mkulima wa mizabibu. Now I don't know much about vineyards and grapevines, so I had to do some research to really understand what Jesus was teaching. Kwa hiyo sikuwa naelewa sana kuhusu mizabibu lakini nilijitahidi kufanya research ili nielewe zaidi alikuwa anamaanisha kitu gani. And what I learned was that each grapevine has a true vine that is thick and sturdy. Na nikuja kuelewa kwamba kila mzabibu ambao ni wa kweli unakuwa na, 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 na mzabibu ambao unaoshikilia na kufanya kwamba huo kweli. You can see a picture of that on the front of your bulletin. Na ukiangalia kwenye uh, karatasi uko nayo utaona mti wa mzabibu pale. Now, wild Oh, sorry. Wrong spot. The true vine on the front of your bulletin, that is the part of the plant that is rooted in the soil. Na hiyo mti ambayo unaiona hiyo ndiyo ambayo imepandwa ndani ya udongo. And from the true vine grows all the smaller vines that twist and wrap and weave together. Na kupitia huyo mti sasa ambao umepandwa pale tunaweza kuna kuona mizabibu sasa imeanza kuota. And the smaller vines that branch off from the true vine that is where the leaves and the grapes grow. Na Zile matai ambazo zinatoka pembeni ni pale ni zile ambazo huwa zinaleta sasa matunda ya mizabibu yenyewe. The fruit never grows from the true vine only from the branches. Na ile mizabibu ile matunda haikuota kwenye ule mti mkubwa lakini imekuja kuota kwenye yale matawi. And even if all the branches die as long as there is still life in the true vine then there is always the possibility for fruit. Kwa hiyo hata kama yale matawi yanaweza yakakatwa yakapotea yaka lakini kama ule mti mkubwa bado uko, uko hai bado tunaweza kuona matunda tena yakatoka. But in order for a grapevine to bear lots of fruit it must be tended. Lakini ili kwamba sasa huu mti wa mzabibu upate kuzaa matunda ni lazima utengenezwe au au upewe samani. Wild untended grapevines they can bear fruit too but careful tending to the vine that's where the real good stuff happens. Kwa hiyo mti ambao hausaidiki unaweza kuzaa matunda lakini hawezi kufanana na matunda ya mti ambao unazingirwa vizuri. That's where you get the abundant harvest of good healthy flavorful bunches of grapes. Ni pale ambako tunakuwa tunavuna mizabibu au matunda mazuri ni wakati ule mti ume, umetengenezwa na umelindwa vizuri. They come from tending the vine. Na matunda mazuri yanakuja kwenye huu mti ambao ume, umepewa samani. And once the great vine is established and growing, what is the most important part of tending to it? Na wakati sasa huu mti umepandwa na wanaanza kuota, ni kitu gani muhimu cha kufanya ili tuusaidie? pruning it church pruning it cutting away the parts that are unhealthy cutting back what is overgrown na ya kusaidia ni kupalilia ni kulima yale majembe mbele ambayo hayafai ili kama huu mti wote vizuri a well tended vine bears the most fruit na mti ambao au mti wa mzabibu ambao umegaramiwa vizuri umepaliliwa wewe unazaa matunda mazuri now it's not hard to make the leap from this vineyard metaphor to our life as disciples of jesus Na ni hivyo utakwenda kuona maisha yetu sisi kama wanafunzi wa Yesu Kristo inafananishwa na hii mtu wa mzabibu. Most of us can say things like I need to bear more healthy fruit in my life. Na watu wengi hapa tunaamini kama tunaweza tukasema kwamba mimi ninapenda nizee matunda mema katika maisha yangu. I need to grow more of the fruits of the spirit, peace, love, joy, kindness, self-control. Na ninahitaji kukua zaidi katika matunda yale ya roho, kuwa na amani, upendo zaidi sana katika Yesu Kristo. It's easy for us to say I need to cut unhealthy things out of my life. Na ni rahisi sana sisi kwetu kusema kwamba ninahitaji kukata zile tabia na hali zote mbaya katika maisha yangu. To say I need to cut things like anger or hate or hopelessness. 
kusema kwamba ninahitaji kukata hasira chuki fitile ndani ya maisha yangu or maybe i need to cut an addiction to something like alcohol spending money or an addiction to complaining au kwamba ninahitaji kukata kuondokana na tabia hii ya, ya, ya kunywa pombe au ya kuvuta sigara au tabia ya, ya kupoteza pesa sana ni rahisi kusema hivyo Listening to Jesus it's easy for us to say we need to be more fruitful as the church we need to cut unhealthy things out of our life Na ili tu, kwa, kwa vile tukimsikiza Yesu Kristo inatuonesha kwamba ni kweli sisi ambao ni wanafunzi wake ni lazima tuondokane na baadhi ya vitu Church we say these things so easily because we have often been taught that having the faith to lead a fruitful life is all up to us. Na inakuwa rahisi sana sisi kusema haya mambo kwa sababu tumefundishwa sana kwamba uh, ili tufanyikiwe kwenye maisha ni lazima inatokana na sisi wenyewe. We think it's all up to us. Tuo tunafikiri kwamba ni sisi wenyewe tunaweza tukajiwezesha. But that's not what Jesus says here. Lakini hivyo sio ndivyo Yesu Kristo anasema hapa. There are thousands and thousands of self-help books that will help you live a better life. Kuna vitabu vingi ambavyo vinaweza kukusaidia ukivisoma ili upate kuishi maisha mazuri. Some of them are useful and some of them are garbage. <laughs> na some vitabu vingine kati ya hivyo ni vibaya na vingine ni vizuri. But listen friends, hear me say this, the Bible is not a self-help lakini acha ni kuambia mpendo kama Biblia sio kitabu tu cha kawaida. Jesus isn't telling us to prune our own vines and squeeze out more grapes by our own determination and our own willpower. Yesu Kristo iko anatuambia kwamba sisi ambao ni mizabibu lazima tupaliliwe, ni lazima tujiweke sawa ili tupate kuzama matunda mema. Listen again to what Jesus says. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Sikia jinsi gani Yesu Kristo amesema hapa amesema kwamba mimi ni mzabibu wa kweli na baba yangu ndiye mkulima. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it can be even more fruitful. Anasema kwamba baba yangu huwa anakata matawi yote ambayo hayazai matunda na yale ambayo yanazaa matunda huwa anayapalilia zaidi ili azai matunda mema zaidi. Jesus says remain in me as I also remain in you. Yesu anasema kwamba mubaki ndani yangu kama mimi na pia ninavyobaki ndani yenu. No branch can bear fruit by itself it must remain in the vine neither can you bear fruit unless kwamba, you remain in me. Hakuna mtu hakuna matunda ambayo yanaweza yakatoka isipokuwa kwamba yale matunda yanatukana ndani ya ule mti. Hivyo hivyo ninyi amwezi kuzaa matunda mema kama amkae ndani ya Yesu Kristo. I am the vine, you are the branches. Mimi ni mti na ninyi pia ni matawi. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me you can do nothing. Ya kwamba mkikaa ndani yangu mtazaa matunda mema zaidi na kama msipokaa ndani yangu mimi hamtazaa chochote. Nowhere in Jesus words does he say prune yourself. Hakuna mahali popote ambako Yesu Kristo anasema kwamba mjihudumie ninyi wenyewe. Nowhere in these words of Jesus does he say make yourself fruitful. Na hakuna mahali ambako Yesu Kristo amesema kwamba mjisaidie wenyewe. Who is doing the pruning church? It is God. Ni nani ambaye yuko anafanya kazi ya upaliliaji ni Mungu mwenyewe. It is God who knows far more than any of us about what we need. Ni Mungu peke yake ndiye anajua zaidi sana kila ambacho tunahitaji kuliko sisi. It is God who prunes, who cuts off the branches that bear no fruit. Ni Mungu mwenyewe ndiye huwa anakata ile matawi ambayo hayafai ama hayazai. God even cuts back the fruitful branches so that they might become even healthier. Mungu mwenyewe ndiye huwa anapalilia yale matunda ambayo yanazaa matunda ili apate kuzaa matunda mengi zaidi. Who among us would know how to do that or would be willing to do that on our own? Ni nani katikati yetu ambaye kwa peke yake anaweza kujiwezesha ama anaweza kusema kwamba angejiwezesha kufika pale tulipo kwa peke yake? Friends, God will do what needs to be done in us when we are willing to let the gardener tend to us. Marafiki niwaambie kama Mungu anaweza akafanya zaidi na zaidi katika maisha yetu lakini ni pale tu ambako sisi tunamruhusu yeye afanye hivyo katika maisha yetu. Now, you and I 
We are not grapevines, and we are people, and together we are a church of people. Na mimi na ninyi sio kama sisi ni haya ni hii miti ya mizabibu hapana. Mimi na wewe ni watu na tunakuwa pamoja kama kanisa. Sometimes that cutting off and pruning back it can be painful. Wakati mwingine hile kukata wakati Mungu anaanza kukata ile matawi wakati mwingine inakuwa na maumivu kwetu. Most of the time we cling to what is unhealthy because that is what we know. Mara nyingi sana huwa tunakimbilia zile njia ambazo tunazijua na wakati sio nzuri tunazikimbilia kwa sababu hizo ndio tunajua tu. Every one of us does this somewhere and at some point in our lives and so does every church. Na haya huwa yanatokea kwa kila mmoja wetu hapa na hata kwa kila kanisa. We keep choosing what is harmful or unhealthy, what bears little or no fruit because there's some comfort in knowing what outcome to expect even if it hurts us again. Kwa hiyo mara nyingi tunakuwa tunachagua zile njia ambazo sio nzuri na sio salama kwetu lakini kwa sababu kwa macho ya kibinadamu tunaweza kama ni za samani tunakuwa tunazikimbilia. It can be scary to let go of habits and patterns. <laughs> habits and patterns that we know, scary to let go of control. Na ni kweli inakuwa ngumu sana mtu kuachana na tabia si moja ambazo umeshazizoea sana, inakuwa nguvu na inaumiza. We may be used to comfortable with the quietness of a certain kind of worship. We don't know what we're missing. <laughs> Tunaweza kuwa tukazoea tuka, tuka kwamba ah huu ndio mfumo wetu wa kuabudu tu. Unakaa hivyo ah huu ndio mfumo wangu wa maisha lakini haujui kwamba kuna kitu kingine cha zaidi ambacho tunahitaji unahitaji. To lose control can be scary. Na kupoteza mwelekeo inaweza ikatisha kabisa. That fear makes sense when we believe that we are the only ones choosing what to keep and what to prune. Na hule woga wa kuondokana na hizo hali ndio hiyo inatuonesha kwamba sisi huwa tunajichagulia sisi wenyewe tufanye kitu gani. When we make ourselves the vine, the branches and the gardener. Na wakati hapo tunakuwa tunajifanya kwamba sisi wenyewe ndio mizabibu, sisi wenyewe ndio matawi na sisi wenyewe ndio mti mwenyewe wa mizabibu. But friends, we are not the vine, the branches and the gardener. We are only the branches. Na marafiki hata niwaambie sisi sio mizabibu wala sisi sio wenye mizabibu. Sisi ni matawi. Jesus is the true vine and God is the gardener. Yesu Kristo ndio mzabibu wa kweli na Mungu mwenyewe ndio mwenye shamba la mizabibu. We can trust God, the generous sower, the creator who sends the sun and the rain and the good gardener. Kwa hiyo ni lazima tumwamini Mungu ambaye ndiye mpanzi wa mbegu, muumbaji wa mbingu na inchi anayetuma mvua na jua kwa kila shamba. God will reveal to us what needs to be cut off or cut back in our lives. Na tunapomtegemea namna hiyo Mungu ataanza kutuonesha ni kitu gani ambacho tunatakiwa tukate na kuondoa katika maisha yetu. It might feel uncomfortable, it might even hurt sometimes. Inaweza ikaumiza, inaweza ikafanya kama tusiwe na furaha. But when God is the one doing the pruning, we know that greater deeper fuller life is coming lakini wakati ambao ni Mungu ndio yuko anafanya haya ili kukuandaa tunaamini kwamba huwa tunategemea mambo makubwa na mazuri yanakuja baadaye we know that the fruit that grows in us comes from the strength and the nourishment of Jesus the true vine tunaamini kwamba matunda ambayo huwa yanaota sasa ndani yetu huwa yanatokana na namna ambavyo Mungu ametuandaa na kutengeneza sisi kama kama mizabibu church In fact, in this whole passage, there is only one command that Jesus gives. Wapendwa ndani ya andiko lote hili kuna kitu kimoja tu ambacho Yesu ametaka sisi tufanye. Only one thing that we must do in order for our lives and our life together to be fruitful. Mungu anataka tufanye kitu kimoja tu ili kwamba maisha yetu yawe maisha mazuri. We must remain in the vine. Na hicho kitu ni kwamba tubaki ndani yake Other translations say abide abide in me as I abide in you No branch can bear fruit by itself Ingine Biblia inasema kwamba tukae chini yake ni kusema kwamba hakuna tawi ambazo zinaweza ikazaa peke yake isipokaa kwenye ule mti It must abide in the vine remain in the vine neither can you bear fruit unless you abide remain in me ni lazima tubaki na tubaki ndani yake hatuwezi kuzaa matunda tusipokuwa ndani ya Yesu Kristo. Abide, remain, dwell to make 
a home in to cling to the living word of God. Mpendwa tukai na tubaki tukiambatana na Yesu Kristo kwa sababu ni hapo tutazaa matunda. Be guided by his ministry, his presence, his love seek him first. Tuendelee kukubali kuongozwa na huduma yake, kuongozwa na, na uwepo wake na upendo wake ndani yetu. The vine the branches make their home in one another Christ and disciple they are interconnected. Kwa tunaona matawi na mtu wao wanakuja pamoja ni kwa kama vile sisi wanafunzi wa Yesu Kristo na Yesu Kristo tunapoungana pamoja tunafanya kitu kizuri. The sharing of space, the choice that we have to abide in Christ Jesus, this church can be our freedom. Na wakati hivyo tunapochangia hii nafasi, tunakuwa tunashikamana sisi wote ndani ya Yesu Kristo ni pale tunaona sasa hii kanisa inakuwa inatupatia ule uhuru. When we remain in Jesus, fruit bearing is no longer something we must do by our own willpower. Wakati tunakaa ndani ya Yesu Kristo kuzaa matunda au kuwa na maisha mazuri sio kitu ambacho sisi tunakiangaikia tena kwa sababu yeye yuko pale. The fruit happens organically, naturally because the vine is true and the gardener is good. Uzaaji wa matunda huwa unaanza kutokea tu automatically kwa sababu tayari tunaambatana na ule mchi wa matunda. Do you see how that reorients us how that shifts what it is that we seek? Kwaje sijui kama na wewe unaona hicho kitu au wewe mwambatano na umuhimu wake. Our goal as the people of faith is no longer just to bear fruit. Kwaje sisi watu wa imani hatuko tena pale kwa sababu ya kuzama tutazama matunda. Our goal is to remain connected to Jesus. Kwa hiyo sisi lengo letu inakuwa sana ni kujibakia tu na kuambatana na Yesu Kristo. Jesus who delights in us and who apart from whom we can do nothing. Na Yesu Kristo anapoambatana na sisi anakuwa pamoja na sisi tusipokaa naye hatuwezi kufanya chochote. In our discipleship we can let go of the need to prove ourselves. Na ndani ya huduma ama ndani ya, ya utumishi tunaweza tukajisema kama tuta, tuta, tutafanya sisi wenyewe. To be good enough or faithful enough or perfect enough au kufanya kama sisi tutajifanya kama tutakuwa na imani sana mmoja tutumikia wenyewe. In our life together as a church, we can let go of our need to be big enough or viable enough or important enough. Na tunapokaa pamoja na yeye, tunaweza tukafanya makubwa na kuzama tu na mema. We can let go of that bearing that kind of fruit. It is not up to us. Na ili tuzae matunda hayo haitakuwa tena kutukana na sisi itakuwa ni kutukana na Yesu Kristo mwenyewe. When we place our hope in the fruit itself or our own ability to grow it, we will surely fail, church. Tukiweka mawazo yetu na akili yetu kwenye matunda au kama sisi tujifanyie kuzaa matunda sisi wenyewe hapo tutashindwa kabisa. We do not place our hope in our own abilities. Tusiweke imani yetu katika nguvu zetu wenyewe. Because who is our hope, church? Kwa sababu tumaini letu ni nani kanisa? Jesus, the true vine. Jesus is our hope. Yesu Kristo ndio tumaini letu ambaye yeye ni mzabibu wa kweli. Not all those comfortable but unhealthy things that we are used to. Na sio hizo tabia ama hizo hali ambazo sisi tunazizoea. Not even our ability to stop doing those things that we should. <laughs> Na sio hata nguvu zetu ili tuache hiyo vitu ambavyo tunataka kuviacha. Our hope is not in the right job or the perfect family or the best church. Sisi tumaini yetu sio kwamba kukuwa na kanisa njema au ndani ya familia bora ama kuwa na kazi nzuri. None of that is where we place our hope. Sio huko ndio tunatumaini letu. Our hope is not a what but a who. And his name is Jesus the true vine. Tumaini letu sio katika kitu gani au sehemu gani lakini tumaini letu sisi ni Yesu Kristo ambaye ni mzabibu wa kweli. Church Jesus calls us to remain in him to abide in him. Kanisa Yesu Kristo anatualika anatuita tukae naye na tunyenyekee kwake. When we do that we know that we can trust the tending the pruning by the gardener who loves us even when it's hard. Na tunapofanya hivyo tunaamini kwamba tutakubaliana na yeye kutupalilia na, kutu, na kutupenda zaidi ili tupate kuzama tuna mema hata kama itakuwa ngumu kwetu. Jesus tells us that when you're growing from the true vine you are free to ask for what you need because Jesus wants us to keep growing. 
Na Yesu Kristo anasema kwamba tunapokaa pamoja naye au tunaposimama pamoja na yeye tutakuwa na uhuru sasa wa kuomba chochote tunachojisikia kwa sababu yeye yuko pamoja na sisi. When we cling to Jesus, when we're rooted in the true vine, we can trust that the right fruit we need the fruit that the world needs from us it will grow. Na wakati tunakaa na Yesu Kristo tunaamini kwamba mizizi yetu ni yeye mwenyewe ambaye ni mzabibu wa kweli na tutaamini kwamba tutakuwa kuzaa matunda mema. The fruit church the fruit will be sweet and the harvest will be rich. Na ninakuhakikishia kwamba matunda ambayo tutakwenda kuzaa ndani ya Yesu Kristo yatakuwa matunda matamu sana na yatakuwa matunda yenye samani kubwa. In our own lives and in our life together. Katika maisha yetu na maisha yetu wenyewe. The fruit will be good. It may be noisy and boisterous and unexpected but it will be beautiful. Ninaamini kwa pamoja na Yesu Kristo matunda ambayo tutakwenda kuzaa yatakuwa matunda mazuri, makubwa na yakupendeza sana. Trust in the Lord and you will grow. Amini na Yesu Kristo na utakuwa. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Na Amen. utukufu murudilie Mungu. Amen. <laughs> All right friends, let's pray together. We're going to pray as the people of God and when the time comes for the Lord's prayer. Please feel free to pray out loud in your own language. It's okay we don't speak the same words at the same time because the Holy Spirit translates for us. Tutakwenda kuingia katika maombi na wakati ambao tutakwenda kuomba maombi ya Yesu Kristo aliyotufundisha ya baba yetu liye mbinguni. Kila mmoja ajisikie huru kuomba kwa lugha yake. <laughs> All right friends, let us pray. <laughs> Acha tuombe. Gracious God, as we tend to our faith and allow you to shape us, may we remain connected to Jesus, the true vine. Lord, help us to abide in you, to bear the fruits of your spirit in our lives. Give us the courage to let go of what hinders us and to embrace the transformation that you desire. Lord, use us as vessels of your love and grace to impact the world around us. Lord, where the world is torn and divided by the sins of greed, of violence, of fear. Lord, teach us to join with you in sowing the seeds of hope and of peace and of healing. We need you, Lord, to free us from our fear. Our fear of others, our fear that there is not enough, our fear of what we don't understand. Lord, you planted us here in a community, a community that you are growing in ways we never expected. Remind us that we are not just one person trying to follow Jesus, but we are a part of the people of God, and we can encourage and challenge one another to grow. We can nourish and tend to each other in the good days, the difficult ones, the days of joy and the days of sorrow, the days of wilderness and promised land in times of illness and of grief. Today, Lord, especially, we ask that you draw near to our sister Lynn as she prepares for hip surgery today. Draw near to those who are awaiting test results, those who are awaiting healing, those who are longing to be here but cannot be. Loving God, surround those among us who are grieving Surround them with your comfort and peace for Pastor Amisi and his wife Safi as they grieve her grandmother. Lord, stay with Sonny Bullock's family as they continue in grief, along with so many others. Lord, we trust you. Trusting in your faithful presence, we share the names of others that we want to pray for this morning. Say them loud, church. <laughs> Kila mmoja atajisikia kuwa huru kutazama jina la mtu ambaye anapenda muombee asubuhi ya leo. For Glenn. Mhm. Mm Safi. Yes. Junior. Rebecca. Ah. For Don. Mm. 
Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of joyful laughter and energy, for the signs of life that that truly is. Like a mother hen that spreads her wings to cover her babies, you gather your children into your presence, held in your love. Hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For this is the kingdom na nguvu na utukufu hata milele amen, amen. <laughs> friends our uh, friends from that normally sing and play at the service in Swahili there was some illness and some grieving and so they will not be sharing a song with us today but I know I'm disappointed too but it's okay because <laughs> guess what you can hear them every Sunday at 2 if you come to worship in Swahili <laughs> But we will keep them all in our prayers as they heal and grieve. Um, but I want to invite all of you to give today. To give to God in response, in gratitude for all that God has given us. To give to God to continue to build up and to grow the church. Inafika mdo wa kutowa sadaka na kila mtu wanaalia wa kujida kutowa sadaka kwa yale yote ambayo munga metutendea. Tulitegemea kuwa na kwaya ya Kiswahili hapa lakini tunaona kwamba kulikuwa magumu tofauti wa moja wanagonjwa ndio sababu leo hawakuimba. And you can give online, you can give at the offering plate at the front here or at the back before you leave worship today. It doesn't matter how you give. Just give with joy. Na sadaka tunaweza tukatoa online lakini pia tunaweza tukatoa kwenye kuna masahani kwenye kila mlango kila mmoja kabla ya kutoka naweza kaweka sadaka yake hapo na Mungu atubariki. And Pastor Amisi is going to offer a brief prayer to bless the offering that you will give, that we will give. Na hivyo nitakwenda kuomba kwa ajili ya sadaka ambayo tutakwenda kutoa. Nitaomba kwa Kiswahili kwanza, alafu nitaomba pia kwa Kiingereza. Let's pray. Thank you Lord. We thank you this morning for the offering. We bless it. Our Lord accept this offering. As the Bible says that the hand that give shall receive. Mm. Bless every hand that has given and every hand that will give. Bless their families. Bless everything that they do in the name of Jesus. Mungu wa bayetu, tunakwenda kusema asante juu ya sadaka. Ulisema kwamba mkono na utowa ndi unaupokea. Bariki kila mkono utaka utowa na kila mkono liotowa. Bariki familia zao na nyumba zao, kazi zao na yote ambao wanayafanya. Tunasema asante kwa sababu wewe ni mwema, unastahili unatosha na tukaenda kubariki yote kwa jina la Yesu. Amen. Amen. People of God, let's join our voices with the children and sing. Come sing a song of harvest hymn 558. Basi tutakwenda kuimba, sisi sote kwa pamoja tusimame nyimbo ya namba 558.
once again, church, you are invited to stay for a meal down in the fellowship hall. Um, when we go down there to eat, we'll be served from the window, is what I was told to tell you. If you're not sure what that is, just follow other people. You'll find it. Um, but let's bless the food briefly so you can begin to eat. Let us pray. God of love, we thank you for the bounty, for the harvest, for the goodness of your gathered people, for the goodness of the food that will bless our bodies, and for the goodness of fellowship shared around the table. Uh, wapendo atela ni wakumbusha kama tukitoka tusende nyumbani, tunakumbuka tunamomu mawili, tutakuenda kwanza kula lunch. Kwa hiyo sisi wale tuwe pale, kwenye hiyo meza tukaribia pamoja, na amekusha kuombea kwa ajili ya chakula mautatumia. Amen. Amen. <laughs> people of God, go into the world, remain in Jesus Christ, and like branches of a vine, draw your life from him. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our way to lunch. Singing grow in your bulletin. Grow. Spirit's with you, and Jesus loves you. Grow, and know God holds you. The Holy Spirit's with you, and Jesus loves you. Grow, go and eat. <laughs> Amen.